Hi guys, I'm Heidi from All That Brings Joy and I'm making my very first video tutorial for you today uh, and this tutorial will be on dry brushing. Uh, a couple year or two ago uh, when I first decided I wanted to try dry brushing, um, I of course went to look for video tutorials um, and I didn't find too many, um, especially not very detailed ones. And I'm one of those people who likes to really research and know what I'm doing before I get started. Um, so I thought for anybody else out there who is looking for a good uh, video to watch to feel more comfortable with dry brushing, I would love to make one for you. So I have here a piece of furniture. Um, if you follow my blog, you might recognize I already finished um, the piece that matches this. It was a tall chest of drawers. Um, this is a shorter, longer chest of drawers and I started out by stripping the top, uh, stripped it to bare wood, stained it darker and polyed it and now I've already done two coats of Annie Sloan chalk paint on the rest of the dresser in the color Paris Gray. Um, I'll show you in a second that actually when painting the dresser I knew I was going to want a lot of color dimension, different colors going on. Um, so instead of going heavily with paint, I went really light so that the wood still shows through, especially in the detailed areas. Um, now when I dry brush with white paint over the top, you'll be able to see three different colors instead of just the two. So let me show you that. Here you can see, uh, especially in the detailed areas, how the darker wood is still poking through. Um, you know, it, I didn't put a lot of paint on, especially in those areas, and also just over the whole thing. I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot of perfection or accuracy, you know. It's a very easy paint to work with. So in all of the edges and corners, I just made sure not to dig my paintbrush in too far, and that way the wood is still showing. So to get started, uh, I have my tools, my paintbrush, the Purdy XL Cub, uh, a paper towel, and my paint. I have Annie Sloan chalk paint in the color pure white. So I start by shaking it up really good and I like to turn it upside down while shaking it. And then I will open it up. And this is a messy paint can because it's quite old, but um, I like to use the lid when I'm dry brushing. So that's why I like to shake it upside down, especially for dry brushing, so that I get a nice area of paint there. So I have my paint can lid ready and my brush, and I just dip it in there a little, and then you can see how much paint is on my brush. That is too much. So then I take my napkin or paper towel and I blot it off. Now I have this much. So you're better to have not enough on your brush than to have too much. Um, because if you have not enough, you can always just blot it again and go over it again. Um, and then you'll be good to go. So let me get closer so you can see my brush in action. Okay, so I'm going to start with the detailed edges. Okay, not even all detailed, just with all the edges. Um, and then I will show you the flat side after that. Um, I think it's easier to dry brush on these smaller areas. Um, I just take my brush and I lightly go over it. And then after I've gone over it lightly a few times, you can see how it's catching in some of the areas. Um, then I start to feel a little bit more confident about how much paint is actually on my brush. Sometimes you might have more paint on there than you thought you did, um, and you'll have to blot it again. But I definitely did not have too much. So I kind of just get into the grooves up and down, kind of side to side, um, especially for the detailed. And for the edges, I go over the sides like that. 
Now I'm gonna get some more on my brush from the can, from the lid, I should say. I got about that much this time. And I'm gonna blot again. Okay, now again, I'm gonna start really lightly, making sure that I don't have more than I wanted. So when I say lightly, I mean the pressure. The pressure of my paintbrush is very light. And then as I get a little bit of the paint off onto the dresser, then I can start pressing harder and harder because I know I don't have a lot of paint left on my brush at that point. Blotting some more. Um, now I want to be very careful that I don't get paint up here on the wood that I've already uh, stained. Uh, but the great thing about any Sloan chalk paint is that, I mean, I can just kind of lick my thumb and wipe it off if I get any up there. So not the end of the world. So there you go. Let me do one more area down here. I'm just blotting some more. Uh, let me show you this area here. Can you see that? So like this is a big flat area. If I just took my brush and pressed really hard to go down, I would get a big chunk of white right there. And that's what I want to avoid. So that's why I'm going to use really light pressure. Oh, see I got a little bit of a white chunk, but that's okay. Not too bad. Not too big. Now I'm starting to use more and more pressure because I've obviously gotten more of the paint off of my brush now. And then I go over that little white chunk that I left and it just kind of softens out and looks okay. You know, that's the thing about dry brushing is that it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. I do have areas that have a little bit more white and areas that don't, and that's okay. Um, it looks nice that way. So doing the detailed area, I feel, is a little bit easier. Um, you're less likely to make as big of a mistake on such a little area. Um, but when we go next to a big flat area, that's when things get a little scary. And so that's what I really want to show you. Okay, so I actually went ahead and finished up the whole front of the dresser. Um, and now I am ready to do the side of it. Um, the side has a much bigger flat area on it and that's the area where it can get a little bit trickier to have it look very natural um, and not too splotchy. Um, so that's what I really wanted to show you. I feel like it's too close. There you go. Um, and also I just wanted to give you some pointers on if you do get a splotchy spot, um, some different ways to fix it so that you're not too afraid to try because there are a few different ways uh, that you can fix any mistakes, so nothing to worry about. Um, so I've got my paint lid, and it's actually kind of running out of paint, so I'm going to put my lid back on and shake it so that I have some fresh paint to work with on top of my lid. I always have dried paint all over the place when I shake my paint can. It gets everywhere, sorry about that. Alright, so now I have some more fresh paint to work with. So I dip and I blot. I kind of got a lot of paint, so I'm actually going to flip over my napkin and blot some more on a dry area. Okay, so that's better. And now I'll just go ahead oh, and start right in this area. Now the key is, is to use that light pressure with your hand. Don't press hard, very lightly, just kind of sweep, sweep over it. And it looks like I had like no paint left, so I will get some more. Uh, 
Um, when I'm doing it, I do get, you know, a few spots that have a little more white on them here and here. And that's okay. I think that looks natural. It looks nice. light pressure and then slowly start pressing harder and harder. Um, I try to go in one direction up and down for most of the dresser um, but there are some areas up here where you just have to go side to side and it looks fine but for the most part I think try to stay up and down the whole way. Now, of course, talking while painting is distracting me a little. So I did, I did get a blotch over here, um, and that's okay. It's not too bad. And then once like most of the paint is off my brush, I'll just press really hard and try spreading it all out evenly. And if I have any spots that seem a little bit bare, I'll kind of attack it with my brush like that. So let me show you up close what it's looking like. So here's how it's starting to look. I hope the lighting is good enough with the storms going outside. Um, you know, it looks a tiny bit streaky in a few spots. Spots, like right here um, but I think it's looking natural so when I do make a mistake uh, when I do take my brush and press on it with too much pressure right away um, I will get a white blotchy spot and I guess I could just do one on purpose even though that feels so wrong, but I will do one on purpose. So, if I thought that that was too white, which it's not really, um, the first thing I can do is take my napkin and go over it. And look at that, I mean, that completely fixed it. Um, if going over it with the napkin isn't working, you can try licking your finger and going over it. Uh, that might take a little bit off or at least just kind of smudge it out so that it's not such a spot of white. Um, and then last resort, if it's a really big smudge and it's dried too quick, all you need to do is take out your bottom color, which in my case is Paris Gray, and you know, take your other paintbrush and just go over that spot with some Paris Gray. Get rid of the splotch. Then when that's dried, just 30, 40 minutes later, go back with your top color, which for me is the uh, pure white, and dry brush over it again, and you're set. So don't be afraid to just get started and to try it out, um, and know that you're not gonna ruin anything because you have all those options for fixing it. So don't be afraid to just try it. And I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.